Dawkins Policy Radio, offering a unique perspective on everything geopolitics, culture creation, the reality of the world we live in. Coming to you live from New York City, your host, Pierce Redmond. Okay, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Porkins Policy Radio. As always, I am your host, Pierce Redmond, and you can find the show here at American Freedom Radio, AmericanFreedomRadio.com, as well as on my website, which is PorkinsPolicyReview.com. And, of course, if you are new to the show, there are lots of ways to listen. You can uh, follow the uh, RSS feed uh, directly on my website. Of course, everything is archived here at AFR. You can also find me on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Google Play, a whole bunch of other podcatchers. And I, have, uh, of course, am also rebroadcast later on in the week on Friday nights on a host of other networks, including Awake, uh, People's Internet Radio, Ed Opperman's Spreaker Channel, uh, and, a, and a couple more stations. I'll, I'll list. Uh, we'll get we'll, we'll get those all up on the website. I know I keep kind of saying that. Um, uh, also, if you want to support my work, you can of course go to patreoncom slash Redmond and you can become a subscriber for as little as a dollar a month. And uh, I will be recording the bonus podcast uh, probably this weekend. So uh, hopefully it'll be out around uh, Sunday or Monday at the very latest. And uh, we are going to be doing a, uh, a joint uh, bonus podcast again this month with our good friend Chuck Ocelli. We're going to be talking about the uh, television show Counterpart, uh, which is on Stars. A uh, very good show. So if you haven't uh, seen that, I would uh, suggest uh, binging on it so that you can listen to our uh, conversation on it. Uh, and also, I just wanted to uh, uh, plug that um, we are also going to be recording a, a new episode of Porkins Great Game. Christoph and I are going to be doing that uh, this week, um, in, probably in the next couple of days. And it will be out, uh, hopefully, before the end of July. But at the very latest, it will you know, be definitely out by August. Lots of really interesting topics. I know people have been uh, you know, wondering what we're going to be covering and stuff. So just stay tuned. Just a few more days, and you will... Uh, have that, but uh, oh, and also I've uh, totally forgot to mention. I wanted to thank uh, John Mark and Andrew for recently signing up to Patreon. So thank you uh, both so much. Um, today we have a very special guest. I am joined on the line by Sam Spadino, uh, and uh, Sam recently made headlines for uh, attending a Trump rally in uh, Minnesota, where he held up a picture of Trump and Jeffrey Epstein with the caption, who is Jeffrey Epstein? And uh, I, I hope everyone is somewhat familiar with the story. If you're not, uh, we'll, we'll have some articles in the show notes, and we'll, of course, link up to uh, the video, because this was a televised uh, rally. And, uh, you know, it's quite uh, interesting. And we'll, of course, get into all that. But uh, first and foremost, Sam Savino, how are you? It's good to have you on the show. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Well, um, Sam, uh, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? You know, who is Sam Spadino? Um, because, uh, you know, uh, in part because I, I want to hear, you know, about, you know, yourself and what you're into, what you're doing. Uh, but also, of course, because uh, in this day and age, you know, a quick Google search – uh, will produce all sorts of things about someone, uh, and I know that there is, uh, you know, there's already a little bit of, uh, I don't know, you know, uh, <laughs> hate comments and things like that out there uh, because of uh, what you, uh, you know, courageously did in front of Trump. So tell the listeners a little bit about who Sam Spadino is. Um, you know, what what do you do? Who are you? Well. Um... Yeah, definitely uh, some information out there on Google for anybody who does <laughs> want to take a look. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm in uh, Minneapolis. I have uh, done stand-up comedy for a number of years, run my own open mics. Now I run a uh, my own trivia company called Trivia Against Humanity. We do uh, bar trivia, and uh, that's kind of... Uh, my latest project I uh, definitely consider myself uh, an activist and uh, was heavily involved in Bernie Sanders campaign at least as far as uh, 
online and in the uh, the meme world. So I kind of developed some skills creating memes and uh, working in some of those groups to promote that message. And uh, I'm also very interested and uh, have made a few films and looking towards a, a documentary coming up regarding politics, social media, memes, and uh, so forth. Excellent. And um, I guess I, I just wanted to ask you just because uh, when I was – uh, looking you up, of course, one of the first articles that comes up is this piece in Vice uh, that quotes you as a, a human guinea pig, and I'm sure that some of my listeners are, are going to wonder uh, about that. So, just uh, I guess, just tell the listeners uh, what you know. What was that article about? And is Sam Spadino a human guinea pig? <laughs> well, yeah, I was interviewed by Vice uh, a few years ago, and. Uh, Fox News was nice enough to pick up on that and title uh, their little article about me, uh, <laughs> Human Game Pig, Sam Spadino. I've done uh, clinical trials in the past through uh, various uh, pharmaceutical companies or uh, you know clinics that offer those, um, which is always a uh, kind of a fascinating thing to do uh, if you do need extra money it is an option that is available to you um, and that was just something that uh, Vice happened to contact me about um, there was talk about maybe having them follow me around in sort of a documentary regarding the uh, the medical testing because you know Big Farm is definitely an important uh industry to kind of keep tabs on. <laughs> I put myself on the front lines, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, that, that part was true. There's other information um, about me that uh, is out there. For the most part, you know, I don't really have too many things to hide. I uh, have the luxury of kind of hiding behind or at least uh benefiting from my character as a uh, comedian that I can kind of say things that maybe other uh, other people might not and uh, have a lifestyle that allows me to uh, take a day off and go uh, get kicked out of a Trump rally. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, you know, uh, excellent uh, uh, description there, Sam. Uh, and, if, you know, I... I will say, yeah, the, the, the Fox uh, News article, um, you know, they, they described Sam as the uh, man bunned protester who was a human guinea pig. And, um, you know, and I, I've seen that, uh, both of those sort of like uh, monikers, I guess, being tossed around, um, which is, of course, ridiculous. I mean, it's sort of like, who cares uh, in light of wh what you were actually, you know, the questions that you were raising. But um, I guess, Sam, let's let's kind of go through... Um, the the day in question, how it how it unfolded. I'd love to, uh, you know, hear, uh, you know, what what uh, you know what transpired and everything. But I guess the first thing I wanted to ask you is, of course, uh, why did you decide to do this? Well, I uh, happened to see Trump was coming to Duluth. It's not a far drive. Um, I have not been a fan of Trump since uh, the uh, primaries, the run-up to the 2016 election. Um, you know, obviously wasn't a huge fan of uh, Clinton either, but uh, Trump's the president. So I uh, had an opportunity to ask a question that has been on my mind ever since I uh, heard the name Jeffrey Epstein. I actually considered doing a protest like this um, in regards to to uh, you know Hillary Clinton, I mean, I think it's a question that uh, a lot of Clinton supporters also have asked: Who is Jeffrey Epstein? So, since Trump has openly uh, acknowledged a 15-year relationship with him, has indicated that he uh, knew that Bill Clinton could be in potential trouble because of his relationship with Epstein and the island, um, I wanted to kind of reopen that conversation and uh you know best case scenario 
I was hoping to maybe provoke Trump to uh, say the name out loud, you know, uh, right. and uh, shed some more light on it. Since he was happy to use that name uh, with Sean Hannity during the uh, run up to the 2016 election, but he hasn't uh, mentioned that since. <laughs> yes, right, indeed. Um, and uh, you know, I think we'll maybe a little bit later we'll get into some of the uh, the new stuff about Epstein. Uh, it's come out in the past couple of months, but you know it's interesting. Yeah, I, I of course have also been fascinated by it. Um, and uh, what I find even more fascinating is that um, you know that it isn't a bigger topic of conversation. And maybe we'll we'll get to that a bit later because um, you know I, I don't know if you saw Sam, but like the the FBI released a file on Epstein, which has uh, multiple mentions of Trump uh, throughout that. Uh, mm -hmm. And, of course, that didn't really seem to go anywhere. Nobody said anything. We've got uh, Alex Acosta as our labor secretary, who was the, law, the, um, the prosecutor that basically gave Epstein the sweetheart deal. Um, but yet, lo and behold, it's not a topic of conversation um, until uh, recently when you showed up at the rally. So why don't we, we get into that? I mean, what was yeah. – um, let, let's talk about the, the day itself. You know, you – uh, I assume you kind of had to like psych yourself up to go to this rally because I mean I, I personally would probably be terrified uh, going into a giant rally with um, you know all of these lunatics shouting USA and wearing the Make America Great Again hat. So just talk about uh, you know getting yourself prepared for this. Sure. So uh, it was something that kind of came together. Last minute, a friend of mine, a female friend, also accompanied me on this trip, and together we uh, made our way in through a uh, security line. They don't require you to present a ticket or uh, your ID. They just kind of get you through the metal detector mm. and uh, run a wand past you, make sure you're not, you know, having any... Uh, contraband on you but uh, they, they also don't want you to bring in your own signs so I knew that and had the signs tucked away in my pants obviously uh, didn't want to uh, get busted with those uh, right away a police officer uh, singled me out after I made it through the middle detector uh, you know profiled me maybe because of the long hair or uh, I had some American flag peace glasses that I was wearing with the peace symbol on them so that may have been a uh, a little bit of a giveaway uh, didn't wear a disguise or anything um, but after that brief uh, confrontation asked for my ID from the police officer that was a little scary I was uh, let go and then just uh, made my way to the front of the, the rally we had a few hours to wait and so yeah there was a lot of uh, anxious nervousness happening in those moments but it gave me a good chance to kind of look around and see who these people are and what their expectations were it felt like a uh, a wwf rally or a, you know something like a concert where they knew that the greatest hits would soon be coming they couldn't <laughs> wait for him to talk about fake news they couldn't wait to start a cnn sucks chant you know they knew <laughs> what to expect and it didn't go much further than that you know these are not terrible people uh they're just not terribly uh bright in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> no no totally and i can um give us just like a little flavor for you know uh the, the types of people that like the sentiment i mean like you said i guess it, it you know they're sort of waiting um were there chants going on did you like hear people talking were they um you know just sort of going through the the litany of grievances and things like that what was the the the, the sort of energy of the crowd so the atmosphere inside of this stadium, uh, which gradually filled up, uh, the floor, you know, was pretty accessible for quite a while. Um, it uh, had the feeling of, you know, just waiting for a sporting event to start, a playlist of kind of bad wedding music, like the Village <laughs> People and Elton John and Don't Stop Believing is playing, interspersed <laughs> with... Uh, propaganda that's coming over the jumbotron including uh trump's daughter-in-law giving the real news 
and breaking down kind of three talking points of uh, highlights of things Trump has done. They'd put out a mini documentary about the making of the mega hats, which plays over the <laughs> jumbotron, takes you inside the factory where they're made. And there was also a uh, loudspeaker announcement regarding protesters saying that, you know, this is potentially going to happen. Donald Trump respects the First Amendment almost as much as the second. But if you see a protester, don't harm them. Just surround them and chant Trump, Trump, Trump until they're taken away. That was a, really? a almost verbatim. Yeah, it was a really creepy uh, voiceover. So, you know, we knew that that was going to happen. We just didn't know how quickly we would be removed. Um, and we certainly didn't know what the crowd would do. Um especially being up so close, you know, you've got to imagine that the people in the front row are the real <laughs> diehards. Right. Uh, we were separated by a little barrier from the podium. And uh, on the other side of the barrier, I saw, you know, like a biker for Trump and uh, whoever else was back there. Um, and then finally, uh, some big uh, Italian opera music started and uh, the uh, man himself emerged. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Um, yeah, it, was, uh, it was very, uh, very creepy, especially the uh, the Italian. Opera. Yeah, I, I don't know what that's about, right? Um, and and certainly this like uh, explaining that you know there there will probably be protesters and and surrounding them and chanting until I guess security <laughs> comes. Really strange. You mentioned um, the the documentary about making the making America Great Again hats or were they selling the hats there like is, was there like merchandise yeah I believe uh, they probably did have merch booths there was uh, some unofficial merch being sold outside you gotta make sure you get the green underbill of the hats for it to be official uh, oh okay <laughs> uh, so don't get fooled by the fake mega hats out there <laughs> um yeah apparently made in the usa so you know good for that company uh capitalizing on uh, a uh fan base that you know can't uh be swayed apparently i think i hope yeah. that the heart of what was at my protest is that there has to be a line for people and so the question i was raising um is a wedge i hope that would cut both ways and just get people searching into an area that is a bit darker than most people are are willing to uh to get into uh but it's uh, not something i think that we should uh shy away from in light of everything else we know about Trump and uh, especially his own words. How no, can no, you do it? Certainly. Yeah. To me, it's uh, just uh, that that is a line for me. No matter what else Trump does, he should have to account for that relationship. Or well, at least give a, you know, a, some, some explanation or, or something. I mean, um, you know, like I said, I mean, we're getting it in sort of drips and drabs, but there is more and more information coming out that suggests um, that, you know, this relationship went much deeper than uh, we've previously been led to believe. Uh, and, you know, that, that he really does, uh, should address this. Um, now, uh, and I want to, we'll get into that a little bit later, Sam, but uh, I guess, Bring us back into uh, this arena. We've got the Italian opera music playing, uh, and then you know Trump, I guess, appears. Um, what was was it? Just like complete pandemonium, everyone just losing it. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, just a lot of uh, cheers and jumping up and down, and you know, phones are out, and you know, he is obviously has been a celebrity he's you know the president but uh i think people who are kind of fans of him still at this point um you know like really genuinely enjoy this character you know what he uh kind of the energy that he brings uh and do view him as sort of a classic 
heel character, you know, or somebody right. who is good at getting under people's skin or uh, is some sort of authority on uh, who should be fired or... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the respect has not waned at all, and uh, anybody who does question him uh, is obviously suspect or a, a paid protester or whatever. So, looking around, um, yeah, I didn't see anybody in there that I was, you know, afraid of. I was just uh, nervous of our cover being blown prematurely that the uh, the protest wouldn't be carried out. And so it was a matter of waiting for the right moment to uh, produce the signs. And I think I wanted to hear what he had to say for a little bit too because this was right after we he had signed the executive order saying that families would no longer be separated. We had mm. just learned about the children in cages and everything. All of that anger was uh, kind of present uh, on the outside and there was a uh, I guess perhaps a little anger in the uh, the pushback of you know having to keep families together you know and having right. been forced to sign that executive order you know. Mm. Uh, how long did Trump uh, talk for before you produced the signs? Um, I would say it was probably you know no more than thirty minutes. There were a few local politicians that came up and gave their little. Uh, speeches and um, he didn't seem to particularly care for how long they uh, took the spotlight um, <laughs> but uh, you know he got going he was up there for probably about 20 minutes and I I didn't know what the signal was going to be my friend uh, had uh, memorized a phrase in Spanish which basically just was fuck ice uh, and so without warning she kind of started in and uh, would kind of occasionally scream that out and <laughs> that you know that was making me a little nervous because speaking Spanish at a Trump rally it doesn't seem like a good idea especially if you're uh, saying fuck ice <laughs> yeah not that anybody was going to be able to translate that but uh, <laughs> right. I just didn't want our cover blown but it worked out it uh, just sort of naturally led into this moment of somehow silence where she just screamed out who is Jeffrey Epstein and at that point uh, you know it was go time I had already brought the sign out had that ready to go put that up and we both just started uh, kind of yelling and Mm. brought attention to ourselves um she was actually screaming uh, child rapist um mm -hmm. which uh you know is exactly what jeffrey epstein is yeah uh, <laughs> i don't there's, think there's, there's no denying that no then there's allegations that uh, suggest that trump is as well so i yeah i just kind of remember uh probably making eye contact with trump um that whole experience, once the protest began, was sort of an out-of-body experience of just, uh, you know, making sure that the sign was up, then making sure that I turned it towards the cameras, which ended up being huge because Fox News was gracious enough to zoom in on the sign, and uh, they were playing the yeah. whole rally live on their network, so everybody got a look at the sign. That was watching. And I think they, they were the only network to carry it, right? Yeah, that's true. Right. So they they zoomed in on it twice. They they pretty much uh, covered you know the entire protest because uh, it did create a significant disturbance. Probably left him uh, biting his tongue, speechless for close to two minutes. Uh, by the time it took for the suits to come get us. Uh, and start ushering us out. Um, you know, he really didn't respond other than, you know, saying, get him out of here. Right. Um, and prior to us starting our protest, there may have been a little disturbance in the back, which at this point, uh, since there's no video of it, I don't know if that was a plant or if that was some other person randomly that had been ushered out. Um, 
and Trump sort of had to repeat his his insult because when the first protester was uh, revealed, he made instantly went to the comments of how the media is going to spin this into there's a massive protest, and he said go home to mommy to that other person. Once we started, <laughs> he was off book, and uh, it took them a while to get to us. I kept my sign up out of reach from people. And uh, once it did finally get taken, I had a second sign ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> and I pulled that one out, and it was an exact same, you know, picture of Trump and Epstein. And uh, they caught that moment on camera, too. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah, no, it's an amazing little – it just it looks like it comes out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I don't think I could have done it any better um, looking back. You know, maybe I would have yelled a little louder if I uh, <laughs> could do it all over again. But once we got ushered outside, there was no side room. We didn't get arrested. We just got sent out the doors. And right waiting for us outside was the Duluth newspaper. And they just happened to ask us, well, did you guys get kicked out? Do you want to talk about it? And uh, we talked about it. Now, mind you, at this point, I haven't heard the comeback or the retort that Trump had made. Uh, I didn't know he had responded to me personally. Um, so we gave a little uh, short interview, but I told him I don't want my name printed. Um, and once I saw the video, <laughs> I changed my mind. Right. And I wanted, uh, wanted to go uh, go. Uh, go hard on this because uh, Trump gave me uh, a really big gift by uh, asking whether I was a man or woman and uh, commenting <laughs> on my hair. Like, he could have said nothing. He could have just yeah. kept his mouth well, shut. There's no story. That's what's, that's what's fascinating um, going back a little bit. Uh, if you, I'll, I'll link up to uh, in the show notes to uh, a sort of an, an extended uh, video. Of the, which actually captures uh, a little bit before this first protester, and it mm. is interesting. You're saying there, Sam, that you know he, uh, whether this is a real protester or a plant or whatever, but uh, you know Trump is meeting the go home to mommy. You know uh, he's sort of joking with the crowd. He seems at ease more or less, and I I assume he's probably used to this because I, I'm sure he doesn't go anywhere uh, where there isn't somebody, uh, mm -hmm. you know, yelling at him. But uh, and then clearly you can see on his face that he sees what this picture is that you're holding, yeah. and he's just to get him out of here. And uh, I I remember uh, talking about this. I mean, I must have watched this clip you know hundreds of times the day of, <laughs> um, you know, sitting at work, and I was just you know I was just amazed. Um, but the thing that really kind of shocked me, Sam, was that. You know, he he doesn't have anything to say, and he genuinely looked embarrassed. You know, mm -hmm. he looked upset, which is something that I think is we don't see often. We see that sometimes with Trump, where he, um, you know, the, the classic Trump, where he puts his crosses his arms in front of his chest, and you know, he looks like a, a pissy little kid. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's more of like his, you know, regular everyday anger. This looked more like a deer in headlights. You know that he 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 had nothing to say. He truly looked like he was uh, embarrassed and awkward, and that he just wanted this to go away. And like you said, he says nothing. This man never stops talking, except for these two minutes um, yeah. when he's waiting for security. So again, I I mean, and just to clarify for the listeners, you were like, I mean, just a few feet from him, right? I mean, you you said you probably made eye contact with him. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we were probably no more than, uh, you know, 10 or 15 feet from the podium itself. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, slightly less. I'd say four rows of people, and there's uh, there's the podium. So extremely close. Um, you know, impossible for him to ignore. And uh, right. if he's familiar with his own... <laughs> history and that photo uh, and you know knows who Jeffrey Epstein is obviously what he's about and what that relationship potentially means it was almost like uh, guilty knowledge on his face um, which was what I hoped for 
I uh, hoped that he would get so flustered that he would be forced to respond. Um, didn't know what way that was going to happen, but sure enough, he took the bait and made uh, headlines by that particular insult that he chose. And it just so happened to be, I was wearing a hat earlier. That hat got knocked off my head. I was wearing my hair up in a man bun. (laughs) And, uh, you know, I don't know if uh, he was genuinely confused because my friend is also a redhead and a female. So he might've seen double and just, (laughs) I didn't know what was going on. Um, looked into my soulless ginger eyes and, (laughs) you know, finally met his match. Uh, but you know, pretty weak comeback of a classic cut your hair hippie. Yeah. Uh, you know, not his finest work, but the crowd loved it. And that's what that's what's so funny. If like people go and watch um, the, the 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 video from Fox News, and there's also um, I think you've even tweeted some of them uh, videos from like right next to you. You know, people on cell phone cameras, I guess, right in the sort of thick of it. Yeah. But you you see, there's a couple of just you know him making fun of long hair and and the crowd yucking it up. There's a couple idiots there with long hair. You know, these mm-hmm. like sort of like biker dudes and, and you know, I don't know, uh, sort of, uh, you know, the, the kind of like just idiot Trump supporter that he can conjure up this image. But they have long hair and they're like screaming at you. So it's just sort of um, – it's just illustrative of their complete lack of like thought when, when something yeah. like this happens. Well, um, worse than the, the hair insult, it was his need to emasculate – and prove that right. uh, his dick is bigger than than everybody else's, uh, <laughs> and that uh, questioning my gender or what you know whatever uh, mm-hmm. was just a the go to for him. There were some good pieces uh, that were written about what that kind of uh, just is indicative of is uh, his you know kind of a toxic masculinity, uh, the way that he thinks about women or you know anybody that he might consider to be more manly than him or I don't know better looking because all of those things are true I am better looking than Donald Trump I do yeah. have better hair than him <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, anytime he wants to uh, come at me again I, uh, I'm pretty sure I can back <laughs> myself up well, and, and of course, I mean, the, the irony, I mean, he even, I think, said it. He was like, oh, he, he needs a haircut, you know, uh, worse than I do or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, again, I mean, it, it he has long hair uh, yeah. for whatever bizarre reason. Um, well, for, but, of course, none of that really <laughs> – yeah, exactly, right. Um, but none of that really even, even sort of enters in. Give us a, just a, a, another sort of a, like when this is happening, before you're thrown out. Um, you know, were you surrounded? I mean, what was it like? I know you said earlier that it was sort of like this out of body experience, but is there anything you know that that stood out for you? I mean, were people pushing you? Um, was the crowd sort of like used to this and they knew what they were? You know, uh, were they just ch- you know chanting Trump, Trump, Trump or whatever? I mean, what was going on in the thick of it all? Yeah, the crowd was prepared. I think there may have been a couple people around us with suspicion as to uh you know whether or not we were up to something whether we belonged you know so there is an atmosphere of looking around at, at uh your neighbor and sort of uh suspicion of you know who's really a Trump supporter you know and so for the most part I saw a few middle fingers I think somebody may have spit at my friend um definitely cursing and just general taunting which I was happy to uh, kind of egg the crowd on you know it felt like a Jerry Springer audience where they're just going to chant USA until you're taken out of there and you know they obviously such a weird I don't even know what that means at that point you know (laughs) like that's uh, their team they think that they're on the team Team America, anybody else who would dare to question Trump uh, is obviously not on Team America or uh, Mm. or somehow they are greater patriots, which is so ironic given what we know uh, as uh, 
the Russia scandal continues to unfold, which, you know, there's definite connections there. This isn't all just fake news. There are <laughs> Russian actors involved in uh, in Trump's rise to power. So, I don't know. It's a, it's a bizarre mindset. I think the easiest explanation is uh, the sports team mentality mm. has kind of fully taken over. These people had a choice between uh, you know, Hillary Clinton, who they obviously did not trust or like, and uh, Donald Trump. So mm. that's a pretty easy choice for most people to make, especially uh, since he was pretty good at keeping, you know, most of the the darker scandals out of the news. Everything that people knew about him, they had already chosen to accept for some reason. Right. Well, that's again too. I mean, every time he was, you know, uh, was caught with the, you know, an infidelity or cheating on his wife. I mean, all the, you know, it's, oh, whatever. Um, you, there's that pastor who say, well, he gets a mulligan, I guess, on on cheating on his wife. You know, real Christian mm-hmm. values there. Um, but uh, and this is something that we can explore as well. But I mean, I almost wonder if some of these uh, salacious Scandals like uh, this is Stormy Daniels thing is it almost a godsend to him? You know, like there's going to be some sort of a scandal around this guy, so let's just have it be a, a consensual relationship with a porn star. That's mm-hmm. that's fine because again, too, I mean his his uh, supporters they they think it's it's cool almost. You know, I mean they're 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 proud of it. Um, mm-hmm. it, it you know, there's nothing to that whole thing. Um, yeah, whereas that's this true. But I tend to believe that as each passing day goes on, all of these scandals continue to be drawn out into light. They will sour. (laughs) And a lot of the people that uh, have, you know, had to rigorously defend him will grow tired of that, especially once they hear him (laughs) on audio tape talking about these payments, which is coming. Like, we know for a fact that he is on tape talking about payments to Karen McDougal, a story that didn't really hardly get any traction because they had a a year-long love affair. She voted for him, but she thought she was the only one. Meanwhile, at the same golf tournament, he's banging Stormy Daniels. He's married. He's just had a child. None of this is acceptable in, uh, you know, in normal conservative, like, Christian Republican world, but yet somehow... Trump gets a pass. And I feel like that window is going to keep closing the more and more these scandals come out. Like, I don't... Eventually, everybody's going to have a breaking point. Well, or, or at least a sort of, like, death by a thousand cuts. I think, yeah. uh, I, I, you know, I, I tend to agree with you. I think that uh, at some point, um, if for no other reason than it is just politically not advantageous to have this many scandals because he can't get anything done. You know, he's never going to be able to build the wall uh, if, his, if his entire campaign revolves around putting out these little fires every few months when another uh, scandal hits. And, and I mean... It's we every day. Yeah, I know, I know. It, it, it's like every day, yeah. No, I know. It, it, it's becoming... Uh, ext- and, it, you know, I mean, we just... I just woke up this morning to, uh, you know, Trump, I, I guess, threatening nuclear war with Iran um you know based on and it's so funny too like um this is sort of off topic but uh you know like with foreign leaders be it Putin or uh you know the president of Iran uh uh, Rouhani um you know they will talk with a sort of sophisticated uh dialogue you know they use a lot of metaphors they're um uh you know they're not just coming out and saying don't threaten you know Rouhani said don't shake the tail of the lion and and all this stuff. And then, of course, Trump just responds by, I'm going to kill you, you know? Mm -hmm. It's sort of most base level. Um, But yeah, no, it it is like a, you know, every day there's like a new little scandal. Um, Well, it's like you said, the the smaller scandals take away from the bigger scandals, but the fact that we're there now uh, in, in the best case scenario for him is putting some of his own less, uh, terrible dirt out there like just shows you how much 
<laughs> more <laughs> bad stuff there must be uh, yet to come. And so we're we're in the early stages of learning about how how deep and how compromised and how uh, you know deranged I guess he is. Yeah. Um. Quickly going back to uh, th- this day um, in uh, Duluth. Uh, now it was it was like security that took you out, or was this like Secret Service? Do you have any idea, or was it you know? Who knows? Just guys in suits. Um, they kind of got behind us, put an arm out, and used it kind of just as a uh, a way to usher us out. Um, you know, they tried not to put hands on us in right. a, a specific way. They just used their arms to kind of uh, lead us out. And, uh, you know, they were actually cool. Nice guys. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that was pleasant enough. I don't think you know any. I don't think anybody knew the the depth of the question that had been raised, you know, or what had just happened. Obviously, in the moment, maybe a couple people saw the sign. Maybe some Trump supporters know who Jeffrey Epstein is because of the Clinton connection. Um, but you know, it it was a pretty innocuous thing. I wasn't uh, shoving anybody. I wasn't doing anything outrageous. Just held up the sign, and uh, from there, the uh, the internet went to work. Thankfully, the moment was caught on tape. A number of media outlets picked it up. Um, you know, the UK went in a little bit further as to what the purpose of the protest was, but most of the mainstream press. Uh, in the states, did not include that. You know, they may have uh, mentioned the was that a man or a woman comment. They, you know, if they focused on the disruption at all. Um, but I was almost, uh, you know, thankful to Fox News for going the extra mile and writing a whole article about me, um, specifically because of what Trump said you know they went and found some information from my Twitter and YouTube videos that I'm in and that Vice article Um, and at the same time they left uh, the content of or they put the content of the sign in the article you know they said that I held up a picture of Jeffrey Epstein so I gotta appreciate them at least for uh Putting the name in their uh, on their front page, right? Um, and yeah. talk uh, talk a little bit about uh, the 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 Fox News article itself, because so you know just just for so people are aware. I mean, they you know the Daily Mail wrote uh, a fairly lengthy piece on uh, the protest, and of course they get into a little bit more of the specifics about Epstein and Trump's relationship, and you know of course they've they've got the whole Prince Andrew. Uh, aspect uh, to this whole, um, you know, I don't even want to say scandal, this series of crimes. Uh, and, um, but, you know, and then, like, Newsweek um, did cover it here. Um, you know, but again, with a very idiotic headline, Trump mocks protester at Minnesota rally, was that a man or a woman? Um, you know, and they, they do get into, uh, you know, that you ha- held up the sign with, with you know, the, the quote, who is Jeffrey Epstein, um, but of course, you know, I mean, then the, the, the basic gist of the article uh, is really just sort of talking about the whole, you know, immigration question and, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, but the the Fox News one is interesting. It's interesting for two reasons. There are actually two articles that came out on Fox's website that day on June 21st by yeah. the same person, Andrew O'Reilly. Um, I don't know why, you know, they, they're sort of almost identical in mm-hmm. description, you know, only you know one is the uh, the the title is was that a man or a woman? Trump mocks man bun protester in Minnesota, and then the other one is man bun protester turns out to be a full time human guinea pig and aspiring comedian. So obviously, you know, Fox has got some sort of axe to grind um, with this, and, and I guess they kind of had to comment in part because they were the only ones that were broadcasting. Yeah, um, the uh, uh, the rally. So again, everybody that wanted to watch this, whether out of you know joy or rage, was going to Fox News. And as you say, 
uh, you know, the camera zoomed in on you holding the pic. I mean, it's absolutely clear in the video what yeah. this picture is and, and who, you know, you can, that is definitely Donald Trump. That is definitely Jeffrey Epstein. Um, so I guess talk about these, these Fox, these two Fox. I mean, did they contact you at all? Um, and the other thing that's sort of interesting, aside from the fact that they're obviously trying to attack you, um, although, uh, you know, it's not like you're, um, I mean, first of all, I think that aspiring comedian is weird. I mean, you are a comedian. Um, <laughs> you know, I, mean, like, I don't really know what aspiring means. Like, you know, you, you do stand up, there's videos of you, you're yeah. in uh, all sorts of, um, you know, comedy uh, programs you can find on YouTube. Um, I believe like in the, in the Minneapolis area. Um, yeah. so, you know, I don't know if this aspiring, I don't know what the hell that means, but, um, you know, beyond I, that... I mean, just a little slight, I guess. They, yeah. Um, but, but you know, like, beyond that, uh, I mean, these articles are, are both kind of strange. Um, you know, it, it, they're, they're bizarre because, first of all, it's not, it's not new that protesters come and show up at Trump rallies. Um, but they don't usually, li you know, list the name of the protester. No. Um, so talk about that. Yeah, it is unusual that they uh, went to that uh, effort. I almost felt like it, when it was happening, you know, Trump or his people would like find out who that is, figure out who that guy was, and put it out there. And you know, I I, I would call it doxing in a way. I did give my name to uh, the Duluth paper, but uh, that, they had to clearly uh, go to work to figure out. Uh, who I was, Google me, put in uh, all these different details. Uh, so yeah, it was a little unnerving that they would direct, almost like direct their uh, their rabid followers to harass me online. You know, uh, whatever the case may be, there was some harassment. Uh, there were uh, comments. You know, people came to my Facebook and found whatever posts were open also Instagram etc you know got an email from somebody who uh, called me some uh, uh, slurs you know for for an Italian like a dago and a wop you know like just out there like right. uh, so that may have been the attention they might have just been uh, kind of impressed or surprised that this happened they were uh, nice enough to put up a photo of me with Stormy Daniels, who I had just met like nine days before the Trump rally, kind of coincidentally went to one of her shows in Wisconsin and got a photo. And so I guess maybe that was part of the little conspiracy that Trump or that Fox News was trying to build. Uh, and so I definitely saw people suggest that I was a paid protester and uh, got some good uh, conspiracy threads going on Reddit. So, really? <laughs> yeah, it got people talking, and that was the whole point, obviously. Like, I knew that it would potentially trigger uh, Trump supporters to blame it on the Clintons, which I have no problem with. The relationship between Jeffrey Epstein and the Clintons should be looked into. But, as you know, as much... He's gasoline, president. Yeah, Trump's president. So that relationship should be examined, too. It's not as if... Uh, you know, Trump uh, denounced him ever or, uh, you know, ever condemned his behavior. Uh, he was happy to uh, party with him uh, many times, have dinner, you know, in New York. We don't know how often they hung out. And clearly, if you, uh, if you believe any of Trump's victims, their uh, relationship may have extended into uh, sexual abuse and or rape together. Oh, sir. And, and again, too, I mean, the, the um, these guys, that, like you said, we don't know how often they were necessarily, you know, having dinner and things like that, but I mean, another thing that uh, has sort of come out in drips and drabs, we know that uh, Trump has flown on Epstein's plane, uh, and we also know that uh, Epstein has flown on Trump's plane. Uh, yeah. And I know that, of course, when you bring that up, it's, oh, but, you know, Bill Clinton flew 25 times. And, again, mm -hmm. I – absolutely. Um, but uh, Bill Clinton's not the president. He is the president. And, um, you know, I think in large part, I think the, the Clinton 
side to a lot of this is already out there and has already been exposed. You know, we know a fair amount about Clinton's uh, connection with with uh, Jeffrey Epstein, whereas Trump's is um, is is more sort of shadowed, and it's even more I don't know suspicious because they were friends for decades. Yes. You know, we're not talking about Bill and 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 uh Epstein you know, uh flying. No, certainly that was going on, but their relationship seems fairly new. Um whereas uh Trump and Epstein go way way back. Um to Yeah, they were know, neighbors, the you know. Yeah. They neighbors in Florida as well. Like oh, so Mar-a-Lago picture, was very close. Um, the the picture that you had up to him, that's from Mar-a-Lago, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Epstein's uh, residence is like a four-minute drive from Mar-a-Lago, so yeah. uh, I'm sure they had plenty of occasion to spend time together. And there's articles written about that. So even if you think Trump did absolutely nothing wrong, um, he clearly alluded to the fact that Epstein was a pedophile by saying he likes younger women. Um, so first of all, he's excusing, you know, or just partying with a, a known pedophile. He knew that he had an island, and uh, so there's no excuse for any of that, uh, and it's also really hard to believe that Trump wouldn't have participated in this. So I'm hoping that that uh, knowledge, once it kind of hopefully continues to hit the mainstream, hopefully that uh, question will be weaponized. Hopefully everyone will investigate Jeffrey Epstein. No matter who you are, that should concern you. The fact that he's free right now out uh, in the world, free to continue his business um, of trafficking and uh, continuing to abuse kids. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be a partisan issue. Yeah, I know, exactly. Which, uh, for whatever bizarre reason it is, and... um, uh, the, the Epstein thing for me uh, is interesting looking at it, you know, like the way it sort of shaped society's uh, handling of these sort of issues where, you know, it used to kind of be something as heinous as mm-hmm. the, as what Epstein is accused of. That was not a partisan issue. You know, there was no, you know, if it happened, if it was a senator, it didn't matter what party he was in, he was evil. But mm-hmm. for whatever bizarre reason, um, we've entered into a realm where uh, what Epstein and Bill Clinton does is reprehensible, but what Epstein and Trump does just doesn't exist. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, there there is no – people either don't believe it or this in, insane theory that, you know, he's going to weed out all of the, the pedos and – you know, mm-hmm. he he never really liked Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, I'm sure you've seen a lot of these now, Sam. Um, so it, it's just so strange, and I, and unfortunately, I feel like that's just kind of how all of the uh, you know um, sexual violence or uh, abuse is is going to be handled from now on. You know, there's always going to be this. Well, uh, you know, this is okay, but that's not okay. Um, it just um because we're 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 running out of time here in the first hour and I do want to uh if you can stick around for a, a bit in the second hour because I've got a, a couple other things and we kind of switch gears yeah. but um you know I also just I found it fascinating the speed with which so many people uh, started attacking you you know like videos of you on YouTube that um you know from like a year or, or two years ago even um that uh you know uh, you know, nobody was was actively necessarily like uh, you know go, going and finding. You know, now all of a sudden there's all these comments. You know, there's mm-hmm. negative attacking you. Um, I mean, again, it 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 does make you wonder. I mean, how concerted an effort. And I've seen this like you know articles and stuff. You know, going after you. I've seen people saying you're the pedophile. You know, which is just <laughs> I mean so <laughs> crazy to me. Um, given the fact that I mean, there's no doubting what Epstein did. He admitted to it. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no way around that. Um, yet you're the bad guy. And well, oh, oh, oh well, you know what, Sam? We're, 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 yeah, absolutely. We're at the break right now. We are going to continue this conversation with my guest, Sam Spadino, in the second hour. So please stay tuned.
doing narcotics. Freedom. Oh, yes. I like very much radio. You're an American institution. American Freedom Radio. Simply Clean Foods is dedicated to providing the best quality food you can buy next to fresh from a farmer's market. Our stringent quality controls and absolute zero GMOs plus testing for heavy metals makes us unique in the storable foods market. Our line of fruits, vegetables, and meats are suitable for everyday use and you won't have to worry about throwing away valuable groceries ever again. Take out the amount you need and reseal the package for use within the next six months. Simply Clean Foods' primary focus is to bring clean food to people all around the world and change the way we look at freeze-dried food in our daily cooking. Go to simplycleanfoods.net. That's www.simplycleanfoods.net today. This is Rick Simpson, and you're listening to American Freedom Radio. American Survival Wholesale is a proud sponsor of the American Freedom Radio. And when you purchase quality products from AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com, you help support this program. Our quality non-GMO foods do not contain MSG, high fructose corn syrup, or heavy metals. At American Survival Wholesale, you can choose from over 8,000 quality products, including self-defense weapons, bug-out bags, and long-term storable food at wholesale prices. We also have custom food packs available, including gluten-free, dairy-free, and vegetarian packs. If we don't have it, (laughs) you don't need it. American Survival Wholesale is a veteran-owned and operated company, which also supports our veterans in need, and we are very active in disaster relief. If you would like to become a distributor, please email us at bugoutamerica at usa.com or call 818-720-0759. We offer free consultations to answer all your questions. Do it today while things are calm. That's americansurvivalwholesale.com. I don't like words that hide the truth. I don't like words that conceal reality. I don't like euphemisms. And American English is loaded with euphemisms because Americans have a lot of trouble dealing with reality. Americans have trouble facing the truth. So they invent the kind of a soft language to protect themselves from it. I'll give you an example of that. When I was a little kid, if I got sick, they wanted me to go to the hospital and see the doctor. Now they want me to go to a health maintenance organization. Smug, greedy, well-fed white people have invented a language to conceal their sins. It's as simple as that. The CIA doesn't kill anybody anymore. They neutralize people. The government doesn't lie and engages in disinformation. Israeli murderers are called commandos. Arab commandos are called terrorists. Contra killers are called freedom fighters. Well, if crime fighters fight crime and firefighters fight fire, what do freedom fighters fight? They never mention that part of it to us, do they? Never mention that part of it. You're listening to AmericanFreedomRadio.com, the network who perseveres in delivering intelligent debate, constructive dialogue with true independence. The freedom to broadcast the truth is not free at all. So what is American Freedom Radio worth to you? The empowering information with fun, honest and pure integrity behind it provides an example to follow. Friendships to flourish with the moral altruism that pulls no punches. The hosts sacrifice and show remarkable discipline in their duty to deliver quality radio and service to the community with strength, wisdom and loyalty. The founders of AFI wish to thank you personally for sharing your views and insights to make the best radio and alternative media. Now it's time for you to give something back and play a vital role in the future of America. Be as generous with us as we've been with you. Click on the donate banner at AmericanFreedomRadio.com or volunteer by emailing AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Vaccine, psychotropic drugs, and artillery batteries not included. Long Mind to experience American Freedom Radio. Walkin Policy Radio, offering a unique perspective on everything geopolitics. Culture creation, the reality of the world we live in. Coming to you live from New York City, your host, Pierce 
Okay, everybody, welcome back to Porkins Policy Radio. I am your host, Pierce Redman. Uh, if you are joining us now here in the second hour, we are speaking with Sam Spadino, uh, who is a comedian uh, and an activist who, of course, uh, uh, made headlines uh, just a few weeks ago by uh, holding up a picture of Jeffrey Epstein and our president, Donald Trump, with the caption, Who is Jeffrey Epstein? We have been speaking with Sam about the uh, protest itself, what was going on, and we're going to kind of expand that a little bit. Um, just very quickly, I wanted to also mention that uh, some older episodes of Pork and Policy Radio are going to be rebroadcast uh, by Montez Press, uh, which is a small press uh, here in New York City, um, and I believe they have uh, a few other locations elsewhere. Uh, but they also do um, a, uh, they have a, a radio uh Station. You can find it online. They have a, a really cool studio as well. And they're going to be playing a bunch of my old episodes, I think, on the um, with Stephen Singular uh, on the John Benet Ramsey murder. Uh, and I, hopefully they'll also be uh, re replaying some of, some of my other stuff as well. Um, so uh, definitely check out. It's, uh, I believe it's just MontezPress.com. I'll link up to it in the show notes. Um, and they, they've got a really nice, cool little graphic that they uh, made for me. So uh, thank you to Montez Press. Thank you to uh, my friend Stacy as well, uh, who was able to set all of that up. Uh, and also, just uh, very quickly, um, we're just doing a little bit of housekeeping before we bring Sam back on. Um, I, I mentioned uh, on Twitter and also in the first hour, but Christoph and I are going to be recording a new episode of Porkin's Great Game. Uh, so uh, if you are a subscriber to uh, our Patreon uh, for Porkins Great Game, you will be charged. Um, and again, if you want to support Christoph and I, uh, you can go and sign up. It's uh, patreon.com slash Porkins Great Game. You won't be billed um, monthly because obviously Christoph and I haven't done the show in several months. You'll only be billed uh, when we actually produce a show. So thank you all um, to the supporters out there. And I even had, there's even a couple of supporters that j just signed up. Uh, which is uh, very sweet because Christoph and I have uh, been very behind uh, in the schedule for that. But anyway, we are uh, joined once again uh, by Sam Spadino. Um, oh, quickly, Sam, uh, just tell everybody where they can go if they want to follow you on Twitter. So uh, I'd love to have some uh, folks follow me at Party Dino or Party Dino, P A R T Y D I N O. Thanks for that in advance. Uh, definitely uh, been using the platform to uh, ask the question, who is Jeffrey Epstein? And uh, kind of uh, whatever other uh, important <laughs> issues yeah. of the day happen to come up. Yeah. Well, and there's uh, more and more of them uh, <laughs> you know, coming up all the time. Um, yeah, if you want to come play trivia with me, Trivia Against Humanity, if you're in Minneapolis, come check it out. Find us on Instagram at trivia underscore humanity or on Facebook. Excellent. Excellent. And, of course, we will link up to all of that in the show notes. Uh, so yeah, definitely, if you're in the, the Minneapolis area, I would, you know, hit Sam up and do some trivia. Uh, maybe maybe you could have some, you know, Epstein or Stormy Daniels uh, questions uh, thrown in oh, there. No, we have. You better believe it. Oh, good. It. Excellent. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sam, I wanted to, um, like I said, I wanted to kind of broaden this out and talk uh, maybe about some of the larger issues. But very quickly, just a few, um, just a few little details about the protest itself. Um, you know, uh, you said you, the security just sort of brought you out. That was the end of it. Nobody has approached you since then, like from the Trump campaign. There's no, you know, the Secret Service isn't knocking on your door, asking any questions, nothing like that, right? No, haven't had any uh, extreme... Uh, reaction other than the initial uh, kind of comments and a few threats you know there was messages sent to me uh, on Facebook and things like that but uh, no official response um, I did write an open letter to Donald Trump which was published in the city pages citypages.com uh, Minneapolis's local uh, kind of blog and news uh, source so you can read my open letter to Trump if you go check that out mm. 
Absolutely, we'll we'll link up to that. And I, you know, I don't normally suggest this, but it is interesting to read some of the comments on that Um, because, I mean, well, most of them are pretty glowing. You know, people saying, uh, you know, praising you and and you know your bravery and thank you for bringing this up. You know, there are also obviously these you know little Trump trolls um, interjecting and, and attacking you for no reason. Um, you know, again, making fun of your hair as if that's even a like a legitimate comeback to um, <laughs> the president of the United States uh, being engaged in some extremely nefarious activities with a convicted pedophile. Um, and, and and Sam, maybe this is something we can we can kind of explore right now. Is is like, what do you think? The, the mentality of these Trump supporters is when it comes to the Epstein stuff. Because again, even if they hate you because of your man bun, even if they hate you for being a comedian um, or aspiring comedian, uh, you know, all these things, I mean, there is no doubting the authenticity of the picture that you presented. There's no doubting the fact that these two men are close friends or had been for decades. Um, you, you know, I mean, and again, it, it, Trump is is supposed to be opposed to all of this. You know, that's the the perceived image on you know like Reddit and 4chan and all of these cesspools. Um, yet he he clearly isn't. I mean, like I said, our, the labor secretary is the guy that basically got Epstein this amazing deal. Um, you know, Alan Dershowitz. Uh, who Trump likes to, uh, you know, quote and uh, talk about. Uh, I mean, he he famously met with Dershowitz in Mar-a-Lago just after the election. I mean, this is Epstein's lawyer, you know? Yes. Um, I, you know, and not to mention there's pictures of uh, Ghislaine Maxwell and Donald Trump, um, you know, leaving aside the uh, lawsuit, um, you know, that everyone seems to have forgotten that was filed um, during the campaign, Alleging that Epstein and Trump raped a uh, 15 year old girl. 13. Um, or 13, excuse me, 13 year old girl. Um, you know, and, and again, too, like I said, there's more and more coming out about this relationship. You know, I, um, I've talked about it on the show. There was this, um, you know, story about, uh, which was initially talking about uh, Donald Trump, uh, I believe, saying something inappropriate. Uh, at uh, I think it was in Mar-a-Lago during some like golf competition, you know, and he yes. said something untoward about uh, some woman there, you know. But then buried in the in that original article, and even in I think it was the Daily Beast that that, that uh, talked about this, is the fact that you know Trump held up his own private plane on the tarmac in Florida so that Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell could hop on and fly to New York. And, and, you know, so, I mean, again, this is keeping the the idea, too, that, you know, Donald Trump is not someone that, you know, you, you keep waiting, you know? Like, he's not just, you know, he's not just uh, stopping his plane for, for anybody. You know, this is, you would assume this is someone that is he's either very close with or someone that he, um, you know, uh, I, I don't know, not fear is necessarily the right word, but somebody that he respects. Um, well, so, Absolutely. Somebody in the billionaires club that he probably aspires to. Somebody mm-hmm. who's better at what they do than what Trump has done. Uh, I would guess better at attracting younger women. Better at uh, you know staying out of the spotlight. Whatever whatever the case may be, uh, he obviously enjoyed partying with them, um, and you know you can tell a lot about somebody by who they party with. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I think it's a worthwhile question. The Daily Beast expanded on uh, this whole question. How did Trump and Clinton pal Jeffrey Epstein escape Me Too? Uh, and there's a great article that kind of breaks down all the facts of what happened, uh, you know, what Epstein was into. And uh, no matter who you are, it's worth investigating. And I'll tell you why it matters to me. Um, protecting children 
should be, I think, a core value of any adult. <laughs> yeah. But providing a safe environment for children should be uh, a no-brainer, especially in America. Yeah, it's something that we've been a- unable to do time and time again, either at school or at church or uh, in government or in law enforcement. Uh, most people don't want to address pedophilia. You know, maybe you'll bring it up as it relates to Hollywood. Um, but it's not just Republicans or Trump supporters who would want to ignore it. You know, uh, Democrats, um, Christians, Catholics, everybody has a difficult time seemingly addressing their own demons. And this is an area that does feel really evil. When you abuse a child, when you, when you rape a child, uh, you know something is broken inside of you if yeah. that allows you to do that and to really root that out like we we need to look into all of these different institutions the catholic church still obviously has a pervasive problem with pedophilia and child rape law enforcement has their issues government both sides you know anthony weiner uh as For just sure. one example there's plenty on both sides but getting into an argument of my pedophile is better than yours is yeah. not some place that I want to go. Uh, and it seems to be the only place that the Trump supporters uh, are left with, claiming that somehow, you know, Bill is a worse rapist than, than Trump, even though they're both alleged, uh, you know, sexual abusers. And they both have a lot to answer to when it comes to Epstein. So I don't know. Why is it important to you? You've covered this issue a lot. What What is it specifically that draws you to this story? Well, I mean, I think in part uh, it's because uh, in, in a sort of like a selfish way, I think it's because there's very little good information out there uh, and there aren't a lot of people covering it. So, you know, if you can, if I can cover it fairly well, that's, you know, oh, that, that's a reason to listen to my radio show. But, you know, the leaving aside the sort of selfishness, I think it's because it, like you were saying there, Sam, I mean, not only is this something that should never be accepted, but, you know, I unfortunately see this as um, it's now entered this level where, like you said, it, it's, a, it's a, a, a toss-up between which pedophile is better, you know, mm-hmm. Bill or Trump. And mm-hmm. I can't believe that that's a serious question that people are asking themselves when it comes to something like electing the president of the United States. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I think it it just sort of speaks volumes for how far we've uh, you know strayed off the the, the moral path, um, you know, that we were probably never really on. That that this is the the defining characteristic for some people when it comes to voting for the president, you know. Yeah, um, it was a, a rotten place to be put in, and I I, I sympathize to a degree with the uh the Trump supporters like the uh amount of just factual negative information that is out there about the Clintons might give anybody pause um for casting their vote that direction um so Absolutely. yeah and the idea of putting bill the rapist uh alleged back into the white house was not uh, a great option and so people were able to really gloss over a lot of Trump problems because of their hate for Hillary. And, you know, hopefully that tide can turn, you know, hopefully people will realize that they did get conned and that, uh, you know, maybe they didn't do their homework when it comes to Donald Trump. You know, maybe they did fall for some propaganda or, uh, you know, maybe they just didn't care enough you know, and yeah. this is something that you should care about. And hopefully that moral center, wherever it is, every Trump supporter has got to have at least some core moral values. And hopefully uh, they're willing to draw the line, which clearly, you know, many of them are not if they're voting for Roy Moore, you know, or other yeah. people who are open pedophiles. But, but the vast majority of people are going to look at their own children or, you know, people uh, that they come in contact with and, and just know you don't 
put little girls or little boys up on the uh, on the table, making them, you know, sex slaves, uh, paying them for sex and massages or whatever. You know, even if mm. uh, they uh, the, the payment issue of it is a really murky area as well um, because now, you know, your trafficking in general is just uh, something that should not exist. But knowing that high-level government officials, uh, presidents, princes, uh, billionaires, is, that's something that they not only engage in, uh, they profit from. And are then also uh, beholden to, especially if it's on tape. So the idea that uh, Trump being compromised, it, it could be Epstein who has a tape, it could be Putin who has a tape. They could be, uh, you know, kind of on the same team, basically pulling the strings. Because if that tape does exist, uh, you know, I would hope that that's the line. You know, if you fi- if you see a tape. I and mean, pray we never see it. But uh, if there is a tape of Trump um, engaging in sexual activity with minors, um, I hope that's the last straw for you Trump supporters out there. <laughs> you know, Sam, I, I uh, you know, agree with that sentiment. But uh, on some level, I don't even know if they would believe it. You know, it, it, it would be fake. The, the, the tape mm-hmm. was doctored. It wasn't really Trump or, uh, you know, that that was uh, someone else or, you know, I mean, I, I think they would truly come up with whatever sort of mental gymnastics were necessary um, mm-hmm. in, in order to. And, and this is like a I think this is such an interesting uh, question or, or, or place that we're in right now. Uh, politically as a society where it, it's, you know, people's entire lives are now wrapped up in the, you know, MAGA, red pill, Trump is, is, is so great. I mean, you know, people that were um, uninterested in politics or uninterested in, uh, you know, uh, scandals in Washington, um, you know, who were sort of removed from that whole world. Now suddenly, you know, it's like their their entire existence is predicated on this, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, they're they're no j- jump in, Sam. Oh well, that that group is growing smaller by the day. They got real quiet after the Russia summit, uh, the Helsinki summit. Mm. You know that a lot of uh, people on the right are beginning to uh, indicate signs of turning or at least pushing back. So when Trump gets kind of pushed further and further into this corner we're going to see some probably uh, really erratic behavior. Hopefully that doesn't involve uh, him dropping more bombs or starting a fake war or, you know, a Mm. real war or whatever, you know, his move is going to be. Like, I can imagine him twisting in any direction that will get him out of this. So uh, the fact that he kind of weaponized Jeffrey Epstein's name during the election almost felt like that's a nuclear option for him. Like, if you want right. to try to bring me down, I'm going to go here. And do you really want to go there? Uh, so that, you know, that may still come out. Like, But on the other hand, Epstein may be cooperating with the FBI. Like, there's a, a chance that, uh, you know, he has uh, cooperated to get this deal. I don't know. He might be just up to his old tricks. Uh, but I was very encouraged that the FBI did tweet out those Epstein files. Um, this isn't going away. And the response to my protest not only spurred a bunch of articles, it also got a big sign, uh, a billboard put on the side of a truck uh, that said, did Trump get Epstein off or vice versa? And that was driven around the White House. Yeah. Um, thanks. Shout out to Mad Dog Pack for doing that. Um, definitely support their efforts in uh, kind of just asking the right questions. You know, there's a lot of bad actors and and pedophile characters in the GOP, you know, from Jim Jordan kind of turning the other uh, blind eye to all of the wrestlers that were being abused. Um, now we're now we're hearing it's over a hundred at uh, Ohio State. You know where he was uh, like the assistant coach. 
a lot of those people are coming forward, you know, so bit by bit, like, and it's sad to say that it takes a hundred victims or however many to actually be believed, but that party, um, doesn't have a lot of moral ground to stand on in their support of Trump. And I think that's really going to hurt them, uh, moving forward because people, you know, are sick of this. We don't want to live in a world of constant scandal from the president or, you know, even, even the most ardent Trump supporter has got to be sick of hearing about all this stuff. They can't even watch football in peace without, right, right. Exactly. um, You know, without something happening. So, I I just hope that as people begin to ask this question, ask themselves, you know, what do I, what do I really stand for? What do I care about? You know, we all want a better country. We all want a better life and just enabling billionaires to run wild and be above the law does not seem to factor into any (laughs) equation that makes America great. Uh, (laughs) So hopefully those folks will, uh, open their eyes, you know, even if uh, all, you know, even if they can do nothing but like uh, just stop actively supporting Trump, you know, just quiet down, like just get out of the way, like because justice is coming for Trump one way or another, like whether it's the voters, whether it's uh, the law, uh, his time is going to end and we're going to have to figure out what to do next. Uh, I absolutely echo all of that, Sam. Um, just a couple quick things, and then maybe uh, we'll, we'll let you go. I was actually going to – one of my notes I was going to ask you is, um, you know, did, if you had any interactions with Claude Taylor, who is the guy behind that Mad Dog pack. Um, and I've actually talked about him before because he was um, bringing up a lot of Epstein Trump-related stuff. Um, but he's kind of a bizarre character as well. Um you know, and he actually, Claude Taylor, worked for Bill Clinton or worked for the Clinton campaign um, at some point. Um, so you, you're going to have to wonder uh, what's what's the story behind that story. Um, yeah. And and I've got some issues with him. And I, I and to be honest, nowadays I kind of see Claude Taylor as basically just um, kind of taking Trump's business model, and he just sells stuff. You know, he just mm-hmm. he sells the anti uh, MAGA stuff. <laughs> um, you know, like literally like pins and hats and stuff like that. But that aside, the 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 sign uh, on that truck is priceless. Um, you know, and anyone that's going to do that and drive around the White House, I mean, you know, my hat's off to them for, for doing that because I think, um, you know, something that simple – uh, really kind of sparks a whole discussion, which is what I found so wonderful about your protest, Sam, is that it, it you're really just, it's just a picture uh, mm-hmm. and you're just asking, who is this guy? Uh, and I think yeah. that's that's really all it takes, is, you know, is, is for a person that's unaware, and I don't think any of the, you know, the listeners are all well aware now, but, you know, if, if you're new to the show, if you're new to this whole um, saga, you know, just look up who Jeffrey Epstein is. Just ask yourself that question. Who is this man? Um, and yeah. his uh, connections to... Um, it's not the only uh, photo, so uh, it's, no. this protest is very easy to duplicate, and I encourage your listeners to do it. Anytime Trump is uh, near your town, the rallies are free to attend. Just go, hold up the sign, and uh, mm-hmm. you too can get a, your own Fox News article written about you. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know? exactly. Uh, I think this is something that we... Uh, should continue to get in his face about uh i was surprised at the lack of other protesters inside of the rally to be honest um the fact that he hasn't received a lot of pushback on television at his at his rallies um you know maybe it's just because it is a scary environment to go into um but it's definitely worthwhile and trump will definitely take the bait if you uh, put it the right sign together um i would highly encourage anybody who uh you know cares about this issue or just doesn't like trump to uh go ahead and repeat this exact protest and if you have a man bun uh you know so <laughs> much the better <laughs> just, yes, you know exactly. don't Go in pairs or uh, be safe. Um, wear your hair long, you know. Maybe uh, 
<laughs> just uh, anything you can do to uh, confuse this guy or disrupt or uh, just bring the bring the question into the forefront because hopefully uh, somebody at the New York Times, you know, will pick this up and do another expo uh, exposition on Jeffrey Epstein now based on everything that we know, um, you know, like they've done with Harvey Weinstein. You know, there's mm. a, a, a lot of good evidence out there um, and hopefully mainstream media will pick up on it at some point um, and I won't be surprised if it does because I'm definitely not going to be letting up um, I plan to uh, you know continue this type of protest it may change uh, tactics here and there but uh, at this point if you have the ability to uh, prank Donald Trump, <laughs> do it, <laughs> obviously. Shout out to uh, Stuttering John and Sasha Baron Cohen who are oh, yeah. uh, doing great work. Like, this is Donald Trump. Like, he is a, a, a ridiculous character. It's going to take other ridiculous characters to, uh, to mess with him and to... Uh, you know, hopefully bring him down, you know, if he has committed crimes. We're going to find out all about that, but, you know, clearly it's easy enough to insert yourself into the narrative. I'm just a regular guy. I went out there. I did something. You should do it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, and again, um, obviously be safe uh, when you're doing this. Um, but I do I do hope that this does encourage more people to, to, to sort of um, – uh, replicate your protest, Sam, because it, you know, first of all, again, I mean, it, it's not, you were being, uh, uh, you know, uh, like aggressive towards anyone there. Um, you know, this wasn't, uh, you're not um, throwing glitter. You know, I remember like that when that was the thing, mm -hmm. the like glitter bombing politicians. Um, you're, you're simply just asking a very basic question. Yeah. And I think um, I, I tend to agree with the, the idea that the Epstein story will eventually kind of break, you know? I mean, first off, there's already a ton of ongoing lawsuits, both here in New York and in Florida, revolved, uh, you know, revolving around Epstein and other people that have accused him of stuff. And, you know, there are rumors and, and, and stuff that Donald Trump himself is on, um, you know, is on a, a, a docket list. Of, of potential witnesses that could be yeah, called. That's um, correct. So, uh, you know, and, and, um, and, and some of these are rumors, and some of them are, you know, like uh, lawyers admitting, yes, absolutely. He, he is on, uh, you know, the docket list. I don't know if he's going to be called. Um, but, uh, you know, I think there is a potential there for, for something, for the dam to kind of break when it comes to this. And I think, you know, if for no other reason than um, we live in such a uh, a world where you can't really escape these kind of things. You know, this isn't um, this isn't JFK. Uh, you know, in the '60s and all of his sexual dalliances, and you know, some of them, you know, maybe uh, you know, not quite as uh, above board as others. You know, those could be sort of brushed aside, kept kept under wraps for many years. I mean, that we don't. It doesn't work like that anymore. And I think the mere fact that he is the president means that you know people are digging. Um, and I do hope that we you, that uh, the, the conversation kind of um, pushes more in the mainstream media. As much as I hate a lot of the mainstream media, if they were to cover this, like you said, then suddenly you know that's going to have a lot more traction than Absolutely. anything else. Uh, yeah, I would encourage people to not only you know look into it for themselves, but tweet the picture at Donald Trump every chance you get hashtag mm -hmm. Trump Epstein, you know, send the information to lawyers that might be interested in looking into this. Michael Avenatti, I hope, uh, at some point decides to, uh, you know, breach that topic. He's just had an interaction with Alan Dershowitz. And, uh, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of, uh, potential angles here to continue to push this into the mainstream because, if Epstein is still up to his old tricks, like he should not be allowed to go free. Um, you know, it's, it's a scary, uh, dark world. And obviously everybody should use caution, know what, 
what you're up against, but thankfully there's a lot of people who have eyes on this and it's not going away. Um, and the more articles we can get put out there, the more people showing up with signs, uh, eventually the question will uh, have to be covered. You know, even if you run into a uh, Fox News reporter, you should be asking them. Getting more of this onto Fox News is going to be a wedge. Uh, and, you know, even if they do have to deflect it to the Clintons, like every yeah. – mention of his name is another person who learns about this story and uh, you know it's just a, a matter of time at this point hopefully um, <laughs> right before well, it, and, uh, and also, breaks. I think um, I think with Trump you you've also got the fact that if uh, you know push comes to shove if enough people start coming to his protests um, mm -hmm. or to his rallies rather, uh, holding up signs like this, asking the question, getting thrown out, getting on Fox, and uh, having articles written. I mean, at some point, he's either going to have to respond, mm -hmm. you know, um, maybe in an official capacity, maybe, you know, Sarah Huckabee Sanders will have to say something, but he will have to address this at some point. But I think even more importantly, um, he might screw up and say something, Yeah, you know, and that's when you will, you know, you might actually have him by the balls, you know, exactly. is that if he fucks up and says something dumb uh, at a rally or at a press conference or whatever, you know, he he can't undo his own words. I mean, that's as much right. as he, he tries to, um, you know, there is nothing he, he can't. Then it's just out there. Um, and I Absolutely. think he's he's becoming increasingly erratic with his behavior. Um, you know, I mean, people can remember back these, these like, um, these stories that were, were coming out um, uh, about, you know, in the White House um, uh, 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 talking about, you know, Trump is, is getting his phone taken away and he can't tweet and blah, blah, blah. I mean, that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, he is tweeting whatever. Um <laughs> So, Absolutely. Yeah, he is, uh, for all of his uh, flaws, he is very kind of predictable and easy to bait. So keep using this particular bait and he will slip up. I promise you that. So uh, my plan is to uh, continue to just kind of ride the wave of this incident and uh, continue to kind of antagonize Trump. I might run for president just, uh, <laughs> yeah, just, just to, to get, this, uh... oh yeah, just to get it out there. You know, uh, I think I'm old enough, you know, uh, definitely could use any, uh, if anybody wants to reach out from the, uh, the filmmaking community, going to need uh, some uh, good producers as far as uh, this, this documentary goes and uh, the meme world is a very uh, powerful place so even if you don't have any particular skills if you use social media you can create simple memes and you can push those into uh, Facebook groups and we have the power to uh, kind of shape the narrative by getting things trending, by, uh, you know, just continued pressure. So that to me is a really uh, fun and uh, powerful tool. It's how you uh, reached out to me. And uh, mm -hmm. if anybody else wants to uh, reach out, collaborate, uh, plan uh, <laughs> future uh, events or uh, whatever. Uh, I encourage everybody to uh, to do that. Work together and uh, be your own agent of change. Yeah, absolutely. And again, in uh, today's age, I think it, uh, it it's more and more possible. Um, Sam Spadino, we're, we'll we'll let you go. Uh, thank you so much for for joining us here on the show and and uh, you know for taking the time out of your day to talk about this. I would love to have you back on uh, sometime in the near future uh, to talk about Epstein or, or, or really anything. 
um, you've got a great perspective on stuff, um, and uh, uh, so we'll we'll have to get you back on the show soon. But uh, before um, we we uh, sign off with you, um, please remind all of the listeners out there uh, where they can go to follow you on social media, uh, talk about your um, uh, trivia company, uh, and also if there's any sort of uh, last thoughts or anything you want to leave the listeners with that maybe we didn't get to. Sure. Uh, one more time, just uh, can follow me on Twitter at Party Dino, P A R T Y D I N O, and uh, you can check out my uh, my trivia night, Trivia Against Humanity. I've also got an Instagram called uh, Cool Shirt Bro, uh, where I take pictures of uh, funny T-shirts. Uh, <laughs> so if you <laughs> you uh, are into that sort of thing check it out uh definitely you know hit me up i i respond on, on twitter i'm happy to uh, engage in any dialogue with uh trump supporters uh clinton supporters anybody else um looking forward to the next few weeks as we uh, learn more about the uh, michael cohen tapes the paul manafort mm. trial uh things are really like hot right now so i <laughs> encourage everybody to not get uh worn out with all the scandals just uh continue to kind of press in fight for what you want um and uh let's uh let's do this absolutely um sam spadino thank you so much for joining us on the show uh, and I highly encourage people to follow Sam on Twitter and Instagram um, uh, and, and just, you know, keep an eye out um, for, for Sam and, and some other uh, man bun protesters um, at some, some future Trump rallies. Sam Savino, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks a lot. Talk to you soon. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, once again, that, uh, everyone, that was Sam Spadino. Uh, really fascinating, really a fun guest. Uh, to have on the show, um, and uh, you know, this was this was like a guest that um, when I uh, mentioned it uh, to to my friends, they're like, "Oh, you know, really? Wow, that's you know, like to them, that's big. You know, this this guy who who gets thrown out of a Trump rally on Fox News, you know, that uh, which is big. Obviously, I'm not trying to um, dissuade that, but you know, again, you, you talk about I'll, I'll cover all sorts of topics on the show. My friends, oh yeah, that sounds interesting, but this one, um, <laughs> but uh, excellent and. Um, uh, like I said, we'll we'll definitely have Sam uh, back on the show sometime soon. Uh, and of course, if if uh, he makes uh, headlines again, we'll we'll have to do it a you know an emergency broadcast. Um, very interesting. I uh, w while Sam and I uh, were chatting there uh, towards the end, um, I actually I just received a uh, Skype message from uh, good friend Chuck Ocelli, who I think must be listening uh, to the show right now. Um, because he sent me, uh, we actually he sent me two things. Um, it's really funny. Last night he sent me this a uh, wonderful um, picture. Uh, you know, we, we were just talking there with Sam about uh, the power of memes and uh, social media and stuff. There's this like amazing picture that I don't know if this is new or if it's just or if it's been floating around, but it's it's Trump at some party. Um, and, you know, Melania is there, but he's got his back to her. They're, like, posing for a picture with all these, like, Playboy bunnies around them. And Trump is, like, facing his daughter and then, uh, you know, and facing away from his wife. And then Stormy Daniels is all the way at the end. Um, you know, and th there's a caption, uh, when you're photographed facing away from your wife but towards your daughter. Oh, no, I'm sorry. When you're, when you're photographed facing your daughter turned away from your wife and your mistress, uh, with your mistress, priceless. Um, so that's, of course, just a, a funny little thing, and um, you know, the, the Stormy Daniels stuff. It's like I said, is is a I think it's a minor scandal that can sometimes take away from this, but it's of course really funny. And if there's a, a sex tape, I would just um, you know die a happy man. But another interesting thing uh, Chuck sent me right when we were talking with Sam there uh, was an article in the Hill, and I, I've not uh, I haven't seen this really, but we'll, I think we'll, we'll go through this because it's directly related. Uh, and the the um, oh I'm sorry it just had some uh, little background noise coming through I'm not sure if you can hear that uh, I'll try to uh, mute that um, but uh, basically this is a, the the article is entitled 
Um, sorry if I just sounded a little sh- shooken up there. Uh, there was a, a video playing from this article was in the Hill, and it was Trump talking. Uh, and I thought maybe he had um, I, I don't know he p- was listening in or saying something. But uh, the the title of this article is uh, Alex Jones threatens Mueller. Quote: You're going to get it, or I'm going to die trying. And um, I, it's a it's a short article, and it's related. So I think maybe we'll just sort of um, uh, read it and go go through it. But Infowars host Alex Jones on Monday issued a threat towards Special Counsel Robert Mueller or Mueller Mueller. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Accusing him of covering up sex crimes and suggesting he wanted to duel the former FBI chief in an imaginary gunfight. Jones made the comments on an episode of the Alex Jones show first reported by Media Matters. And, um, you know, I have not seen the video, um, although we'll link up to this and you can check it out. Uh, The article continues, uh, quote, I mean, Mueller covered up for a decade for Epstein, kidnapping kids, flying them on sex planes, some kids as young as seven years old, seven years old reportedly, with big perverts raping them to frame people. Jones says in the video referring to billionaire sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, who was convicted of sex crimes after being accused of soliciting multiple teenage girls as young as 13. Uh, back to Jones. Quote, Mueller is a monster man, uh, Jones continues in the video. People say, well, God, aren't you scared of him? I'm scared of not manning up. I'm constantly in fear that I'm not being a real man, and I'm not doing what it takes, and I'm not telling the truth. Jones then pivoted to an analogy where Mueller and he were dueling cowboys, uh, meeting, quote, politically at high noon for a shootout. That's a demon I will take down or I'll die trying. So that's it. uh, So it's going to happen. We're going to walk out in the square politically at high noon, and he's going to find out whether he makes a move, man. Make the move first, and then it's going to happen, Jones says, miming a pistol uh, with his hands. It's not a joke. It's not a game. It's the real world, politically. You're going to get it, or I'm going to die trying, bitch. Get ready. You're going to, we're going to bang heads. We're going to bang heads. Um, so really just uh, classy, top-notch uh, material uh, from uh, our good friend Alex Jones there. Um, now, it, you know, and it's interesting um, – uh, and the, the 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 Hill article actually goes on to say, you know, it's not clear if Jones's words would constitute a transmitted threat against Mueller, who is currently leading the special counsel inv- investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 presidential election and possible collusion with the Trump campaign. Threatening threatening a federal official with violence is a Class C or D felony, punishable uh, by up to five or ten years in prison. So it, it is interesting there, you know, that because it does sound like he's threatening him. Um, but you know, in at least in the quote, we'll, we'll have to check out the video itself. You know, he keeps kind of um, you know inserting politically. You know, we're going to walk out in the square politically at high noon, and we're going to politically, I guess, have a fight. Um, which is clearly, you know, Jones is I think um, choosing his words carefully uh, so that he doesn't have another lawsuit on his hands. Of course, because he's already. Um, He's, he's fighting, uh, I, I believe it's a two-front battle uh, between his ex-wife, Kelly Jones, who's uh, suing for custody and a bunch of other things. And as this article uh, goes on to mention, uh, the InfoWars founder is currently being sued by families of victims of the 2011 Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, um, uh, blah, 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 after which Jones claimed it was a false flag. Now, here's something. I, I didn't know this. Um, so this is new new to me. He is represented by Mark Randaza and Jay Wolman of the Vegas-based uh, Randaza Legal Group, and I hope that that, that name Mark Randaza um, is uh, uh, you know a light is going off in in your head. Uh, hopefully, some of the listeners remember that name because that is the uh, lawyer and the legal firm behind Mike Cernovich's. Uh, uh, um, lawsuit to uncover documents uh, related to uh, Gisele Maxwell and uh, Virginia Guafiri, or Virginia Roberts. Uh, and people can remember back, I know that was many episodes back, um, talking about that, where uh, Dershowitz was trying to get uh, testimony, um, or I believe it was, it was Maxwell's statements, um, you know, released, uh, and uh, you know his, his motions were struck down 
of course, Virginia Roberts contends that this is really um, in order to smear her or to discredit her. Uh, and indeed, I don't know what, you know, an alleged uh, madam who's denying this um, would have to say. Uh, and then when uh, Dershowitz couldn't do it, it seemed like Mike Cernovich uh, stepped in, uh, filing these lawsuits, of course, claiming that this is about... Um, uh, you know, uh, truth and transparency, and he's after uh, all of these uh, high profile people that are abusing young girls, even though Virginia Roberts herself, um, you know, blocked uh, one of his motions, and uh, he, he had to move the, the case to, um, uh, like, I think the Second Circuit um, here in, in New York, um, you know, appealing this or, or whatnot. And he does have some. Like there's some journalistic um, organization that's now behind Cernovich, although I never really heard of it, and so you know who knows how big it really is. And I have some newspapers as well um, that are sort of jumping onto this. But of course, you know, um, and Alan Dershowitz is quite uh, excited about this, of course. Um, but anyway, uh, without getting into all that minutia, because we'll, we can link up to it. I mean, there's some show notes um, where, uh, uh, or some previous shows rather, uh, where I talk about this. The thing is, though, Mark Randazza is a pretty kind of a shady individual, or, or, or certainly a sleazy individual. There's a great article um, about him that uh, I'll have to dig up and, and post, but it gives you a, a great idea, an insider's perspective on how sleazy Mark Randazza is, uh, and of course. Um, you know, uh, Mark Randazza um, responded to one of my emails um, asking him why uh, Cernovich appeared to be lying in one of his blog posts uh, talking about uh, his uh, ongoing lawsuit to get uh, Gislans Maxwell's um, uh, statements, uh, you know, revealed. Uh, so, um, very interesting character and very interesting that, uh, you know, Alex Jones is connected to Mark Randazza. Um, so, you know, some red flags should be going up there. But more importantly, um, you know, now Trump is repeating this ridiculous claim that uh, Mueller and Epstein were working together or that Mueller was, you know, uh, covering up for Epstein. And this, again, came out because of the, the FBI file um, where, you know, there's this one little line uh, basically saying that uh, you know Epstein did in fact uh, speak with the FBI, and that is, excuse me, that has been turned into, excuse me, I'm burping on air. I'm sure everyone loves that. That has turned into this belief that Epstein is an informant or is giving information. Uh, or that Mueller is protecting him, and that that's how he got the sweetheart deals because he was, uh, you know, um, squealing to the feds. Now, there's no evidence for any of this, and just because I, I'm sure Epstein did speak to the FBI, um, but he was probably, you know, as part of a deal maybe, or he gave them some information, um, or it could just be referring to the fact that he spoke to the FBI and said absolutely nothing. There's no follow-up to any of that. But anyway, of course, in uh, you know places like Infowars and 4chan uh, and you know Mike Cernovich's uh, Twitter account and stuff, this is that you know Mueller and Epstein are working together. They're part of the deep state. They're all going after Trump. Um, and Alex Jones is, I guess, running with this, um, which is just super bizarre. Um, very strange. I don't know why um, Alex Jones would even want to bring attention to Epstein. You know, th th this is the this is the, the the crux of the Epstein problem for the for these people. Uh, and this is something that you know Sam and I were, were alluding to earlier is that you know you can't once you mention Epstein, even if it's in the context of Bill Clinton, eventually you're going to get back to the fact that. Donald Trump is also involved in this. Um, that, uh, you know, Alan Dershowitz is involved in this. Uh, all, all sorts of other famous people that were flying on his plane were involved with this. You know, so um, it's strange to me that Alex Jones, who, you know, just fawns over uh, Trump, would even mention Epstein, you know? And again, too, if, let's, let's, say, let's say that Alex Jones is absolutely correct and that Mueller was covering up for Ep Epstein all of these years. Um, you know, then surely he would know about Trump and Epstein. 
You know, I mean, he, he's saying that you know for a decade he was covering this. Well, I mean, you know, uh, Trump and Epstein were were still um, speaking, you know, publicly. Uh, the 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 um, the the sort of line on all of that that's been you know put out in the public is that you know they were friends up until this happened, um, where you know in 2008 when the the investigation or when he was arrested. Um, because you know that's supposedly when Trump uh, realized, oh, uh, th this horrible guy was was uh, picking up you know fifteen year old girls at the towel, you know check in and Mar-a-Lago, and he kicked him out of the club. So again, um, that would you would think this sort of falls under that purview. So again, I mean maybe Mueller, like Sam said, maybe there is a tape of uh, Donald Trump doing some uh, crazy stuff, but maybe it's actually. From Epstein, I mean, we know that Epstein had cameras all over his uh, house down in Mar-a-Lago. I would assume he's had his cameras in other, you know, his other uh, houses up in, um, you know, on the Upper East Side here in New York and out in um, uh, New Mexico and certainly down in his island. I'm sure he's got cameras. Is Donald Trump on some of these cameras? Who knows? Now again, he doesn't. Even, maybe he's not even doing anything bad. He could just be, you know, hanging out, uh, watching TV. But there's still a tape of him in, you know, there could be a tape of him in Epstein's house. That alone is bad. So, very interesting. And I guess um, the only thing I can really say is that, you know, if you haven't been following InfoWars lately, uh, it's kind of worth it if you can kind of get past, um, you know, Alex Jones, because he's growing this, like, weird beard, um, which just looks awful. He's clearly unhinged. Uh, I mean, it's like almost an understatement. He's losing it, Alex Jones is. Uh, I think the the lawsuit with his wife, uh, the fact that his wife is talking about all of his problems, there's more, more and more videos are coming out where, I mean, Jones is just loaded live on air. I mean, he's slurring his words, he's not making any sense. You can tell when he's really drunk or high. Um, his 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 voice has this like weird cadence and tone to it uh, that doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, and he he's you know, really just not there. So he seems to be having like a complete meltdown. Um, you know, on TV, and now he's you know threatening Mueller to a a duel politically. Very very odd. But um, you know, I think that that kind of goes to show you that persistence pays off. Um, and you know, for for all the people out there that have uh, you know attacked Alex Jones over the years, um, and uh, even when it seemed uh, like pointless endeavor because he's Alex Jones, he's Infowars. Well, listen, I think that is actually taking its toll on him. Um, and uh, you know, death by a thousand cuts is certainly working with a, with Alex Jones. And now he's he's saying all this crazy stuff about Mueller and Epstein. Again, it doesn't matter. Um, whether it's true or not, or whether this, um, you know, just makes people uh, only look at the Clinton, you know, just the fact that he's bringing up Epstein is going to get people Googling that, you know, especially when it gets picked up by, like, The Hill. So now you've got people, you know, regular people that read The Hill uh, looking at this on uh, Media Matters, um, say, oh, you know, oh, wait, what is Alex Jones talking about? Who is this Jeffrey Epstein? You know, and now suddenly, and then hopefully... Um, you know, articles about uh, Sam pop up, uh, and it might inspire people. So very odd and wonderful timing too. Um, that uh, you know, Chuck sent me this article, and I I, I can't wait to um, you know, when we when I uh, sign off here, I can't wait to actually watch uh, this clip because it looks like Alex Jones is is uh, really gonna just uh, go balls to the wall with these comments. And again, if you haven't seen his uh, crappy beard, it just looks amazing. But um, I think we'll, we'll, we'll probably leave it there um, for today uh, in, in terms of uh, Epstein and, and everything that's going on. I know I've said before that I kind of wanted to, like, move on from some of the Epstein stuff, but, um, you know, it, there seem to be these little nuggets and stuff that keep popping up. So, of course, we'll always try to, um, to cover it um, and uh, as best we can on the show. I know also that, the, you know, a lot of past episodes have been really kind of dark, um, and I've tried to add a little bit of levity. You know, that's why I had Aaron on a couple of weeks ago talking about Elon Musk, even though that was a sort of a dark topic. Uh, but I, I am going to try to, to interject, if, you know, some more lighthearted shows or, or uh, a few more upbeat shows because I know that, um, well, you know, I, I could talk about the, the war in Yemen forever. Not everybody wants to. 
So anyway, uh, please check out Sam Spadino and all of his work, and I will be talking to you all very soon. Dedicated to providing the best quality food you can buy next to fresh from a farmer's market. Our stringent quality controls and absolute zero GMOs plus testing for heavy metals makes us unique in the storable foods market. Our line of fruits, vegetables, and meats are suitable for everyday use and you won't have to worry about throwing away valuable groceries ever again. Take out the amount you need and reseal the package for use within the next six months. Simply Clean Foods' primary focus is to bring clean food to people all around the world and change the way we look at freeze-dried food in our daily cooking. Go to simplycleanfoods.net. That's www.simplycleanfoods.net today. This is Rick Simpson, and you're listening to American Freedom Radio. American Survival Wholesale is a proud sponsor of the American Freedom Radio. And when you purchase quality products from AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com, you help support this program. Our quality non-GMO foods do not contain MSG, high fructose corn syrup, or heavy metals. At American Survival Wholesale, you can choose from over 8,000 quality products, including self-defense weapons, bug-out bags, and long-term storable food at wholesale prices. We also have custom food packs available, including gluten-free, dairy-free, and vegetarian packs. If we don't have it, (laughs) you don't need it. American Survival Wholesale is a veteran-owned and operated company, which also supports our veterans in need, and we are very active in disaster relief. If you would like to become a distributor, please email us at bugoutamerica at usa.com or call 818-720-0759. We offer free consultations to answer all your questions. Do it today while things are calm. That's americansurvivalwholesale.com. Assassination. You know what's interesting about assassination? Well, not only does it change those popularity polls in a big hurry... But it's also interesting to notice who it is we assassinate. Do you ever notice who it is? Stop to think of who it is we kill. It's always people who've told us to live together in harmony and try to love one another. Jesus, Gandhi, Lincoln, John Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy, Martin Luther King, Medgar Evers, Malcolm X, John Lennon. They all said, try to live together peacefully. Bam! Right in the f***ing head. Apparently we're not ready for that. Yeah, that's difficult behavior for us. We're too busy thinking around, sitting around trying to think of ways to kill each other. Here's one we came up with. It's efficient, too. Genocide, you know? Killing large numbers of people simply because they don't look like you, they don't talk like you, and they don't have the same kind of hats you do. (laughs) You ever notice that any time you see two groups of people who really hate each other, chances are good they're wearing different kind of hats. (laughs) Keep an eye on that. It might be important. You're listening to AmericanFreedomRadio.com, the network who perseveres in delivering intelligent debate, constructive dialogue with true independence. The freedom to broadcast the truth is not free at all. So what is American Freedom Radio worth to you? The empowering information with fun, honest and pure integrity behind it provides an example to follow. Friendships to flourish with the moral altruism that pulls no punches. The hosts sacrifice and show remarkable discipline in their duty to deliver quality radio and service to the community with strength, wisdom, and loyalty. The founders of AFR wish to thank you personally for sharing your views and insights to make the best radio and alternative media. Now it's time for you to give something back and play a vital role in the future of America. Be as generous with us as we've been with you. Click on the donate banner at AmericanFreedomRadio.com or volunteer by emailing AmericanFreedomRadio at Ymail.com. Vaccines, psychotropic drugs and artillery batteries not included. 
Freedom Radio. 